I'm Dawn Matthews. Welcome to this series on e-communication. In this lesson, we're going to look at internet service providers and what they do. In the last lesson, we discussed the fact that four elements were needed to connect the internet. These were a modem, a communication channel, which is usually a telephone line, web browser software such as Internet Explorer, and an internet service provider. In this lesson, we will look in more detail at the ISP. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain briefly what an internet service provider is, describe the role of the internet service provider in facilitating communication, and list factors that can help you choose an internet service provider. Hi Dawn, I've realized that an ISP is actually very important, but what exactly is an ISP? Well, an ISP or Internet Service Provider is a business that enables people to connect to the Internet. Well, why do I need an ISP? Can't I just connect to the Internet myself? Well, it's for the same sorts of reasons that you can't connect to the telephone line directly. All telephone users need to pay a service provider to use the telephone network. I mean, think about it. Having a telephone and a telephone line is not enough to make a telephone call. You need to subscribe to a service provider like Telcom. It's the same with a cell phone. Having a cell phone is not enough to connect to a network. I pay Telcom and I pay a cell phone service provider. Do I need to pay an internet service provider? Yes, you do. An internet service provider is a business and like all businesses, it charges for its services. In this case, an ISP sells you connection to the internet and related services, like surfing the web and using email. How do I get connected to an ISP? Well, first you have to sign a subscription contract. Once you've signed up, the ISP will give you an access phone number, a username and a password. The access phone number is the number your computer will dial to connect to the ISP server and your user ID is a unique identifier like your login name. Every user on the system needs to use a different user ID to make sure that people can't access each other's accounts. And the password is a secret code known only to the user. Once you've logged in, the ISP will recognize you and then give you access to the services you have paid for. You mean like browsing the web and sending and receiving an email? Yes. Email is an excellent way of keeping in touch. It's quicker and cheaper than ordinary mail and it's convenient too. Your service provider will offer you a range of services associated with email. For example, did you know that many service providers offer each subscriber more than one email address so that everyone in the household can keep their mail private? And if you're going away for a while, you can switch on an away message, which will automatically send a message to anyone who emails you to notify them that you're away and won't be able to answer any email until you get back. Another service the ISP can offer is to keep your email on their server. This means that you actually don't download your email onto your computer. Instead, it stays on the ISP server and you can view it over the internet. This web-based mail can be useful if you're traveling and you want to access your email from another computer. So with email, you can keep in touch from anywhere. Yes, and being in touch is usually just what you want, but sometimes it can be a problem. People can send you stuff that you don't really need, like adverts. This is the internet version of junk mail called spam. Spam can be a real nuisance, and a good spam filter is very important. Some spam messages can also contain viruses. A good ISP will also offer virus scanning on all incoming emails. This gives valuable protection to your computer. ISPs can also provide many other extra services which will add value to your internet experience. Like? For example, your ISP can keep track of your telephone costs while you are connected to the internet. In South Africa, you have to pay for your phone calls by the minute. 
Your ISP can keep track of how long you are spending online and will send you a telephone call cost alert so that your parents won't get an unpleasant surprise when they get the telephone bill. What other services are there? You can also share your personal photos and videos with others by storing them in an online photo album kept on your ISP server. This allows family and friends with access to the internet to view your photo album from anywhere in the world. So I don't have to buy photo albums anymore. <laughs> And if you are adventurous and you want to publish your own information on the internet, most service providers will offer you personal web space which you can use to express yourself. This means that you can send them your website and they will store it on their server. This is called hosting. Having your ISP host your website is also useful because the ISP server is permanently connected to the internet and people can then visit your site 24 hours a day. Whoa, that's cool! So, as you can see, an ISP offers many different kinds of services. Different ISPs offer different services. Hmm, so how do I choose the right ISP? Well, you should look for an ISP which has the range of services that you need and a reasonable subscription fee. Just remember that the more services an ISP offers, the more they're likely to charge. When you choose a service provider, don't be overwhelmed. Just keep the following in mind. Find out how much the monthly subscription will cost you. The size of this service fee is probably the biggest factor in choosing an ISP. Get quotes from different ISPs and then compare them. Just remember though, you usually get what you pay for and the cheapest price is not necessarily the best deal. Then there's the ISP's capacity. The larger an ISP's capacity, the less time it takes you to download information. This is important because you pay for the time you spend online. In addition, if an ISP has a small capacity, it may not always be possible to get a reliable connection to the internet. If an ISP has too many users for its capacity, you might find that you're not able to access the internet at certain times or that the connection is interrupted without warning. Also, an ISP with a small capacity might only offer you a standard dial-up connection and not the faster options of an ADSL and ISDN. You also need to find out about whether the ISP offers technical support and advice. Connecting to the internet can be confusing and a technical helpline is very useful when you have an urgent question. And ask if your ISP has a helpline available after hours in case you have a problem in the evening. Find out whether your ISP checks incoming mail for viruses and provides security so that others cannot access your email. Also ask if they have a spam filter to protect you from unwanted emails that will clog up your mailbox. One of the easiest ways to choose an ISP is to get recommendations from other users. If your friend has been using the same ISP for years and is happy with the service, the chances are you will be happy too. Now that you have heard all about what to look for in an ISP, it's time for today's task. Write a short paragraph explaining the role of the internet service provider. List five factors to keep in mind when you're choosing a service provider. Thank you for joining us for this exciting lesson on e-communication. See you next time when we investigate the World Wide Web and its services. And as always, don't forget to visit our website for more information. Till then, keep well.